Hey everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek, coming to you from the shop, and we are starting a new project. Uh, this is the Seagull Models P47. This is the 55-inch wingspan uh, version. It comes from Legend Hobby, uh, and so we're going to do a quick build review, and then we'll follow it up with a flight review. Uh, and so, in terms of the model itself, it's a 55-inch wingspan. It's all covered in Aura cover. It's got a nice flat finish, which is nice. So we're going to go through, we've got high-tech servos all around we're going to install. For the retracts, we've got some Highmark electric retracts. I've got a Tomcat 420 kV uh, motor. We're going to power it with six cells, and so this airplane is going to be a whole lot of fun. One of the nice features about this, if you're looking for a next step kind of warbird um, or a trainer type airplane. This has optional NACA droop leading edges uh, and so what that does it increases your wing area and also gives you some additional washout so it's really going to give you a forgiving airplane uh, if you are concerned about that. P47s are fantastic flyers. you have got a nice wide gear stance uh, and so they're really fantastic warbirds to learn on. Alright so let's get started. First things first we got to glue hinges and then we'll install some servos and then finish it up with landing gear and power system. So, let's go! Alright, so here is the fully assembled P47, you know, sitting on the bench, it really does look nice. All of the parts fit was really good, uh, and assembly was really straightforward. I had the airplane together over the course of a long weekend. Uh, it really went together quite quickly. I'm using all of the stock hardware that's included with the kit, and in terms of the servos, I'm using high-tech HS645. Uh, metal gears all around and those all fit perfectly into all of the servo mounts. In terms of the assembly itself I like to start with the small components first so I started with the wings. You start by gluing all of the control surfaces on to the wing first. That includes the ailerons and the flaps. They're just CA cloth hinges so I uh, set them into the control surfaces first, ran some thin CA uh, to glue them into the control surfaces and then I inserted them into the wing and then glued them wick CA on both sides of the hinges to make sure you got a good bond and that was it really easy to do process was the same for ailerons flaps elevator and rudder that's how I did that so once all the surfaces were glued in uh, then you glue the control horns there's a slot in each of the surfaces uh, the control horns are G10 material sanded the part that was going to get glued and then use five minute epoxy and I taped all around just to protect the surface. You want to make sure that you get a really good glue bond there uh, to make sure that they won't come out on you. And then from there, install the servos. Those 645s fit perfectly. There are two push rod lengths. Uh, the shorter one goes to the flaps, so keep that in mind. There's a Z-bend at the servo, and then you have a clevis. And I do recommend as you're putting it together that you use your actual radio so you can start programming as you go. Uh, versus using a servo tester because that'll ultimately save you time when you do the setup. So once I had the flaps and ailerons in and all hooked up, I uh, went on to the retracts. Now the kit comes with mechanical retracts. Uh, I didn't use those. I'm using Highmark retracts from Legend Hobby and I ended up picking up a couple Robart Robo struts and tires. The, the tires that are included in the kit are too small so I ended up going as large as I could get that would fit in the wheel well. Those are three and a quarter inch Robart diamond tread tires. Uh, and so in terms of 
fitting the retracts themselves, they fit easily into the mounts. There were no modifications necessary. They're set up for wire. So to adapt the robo struts onto the wire, you actually have to cut the wire. So there's about two inches exposed from the retract. And then from there, you have to set the length of your robo strut. Those robo struts are designed to be shortened uh, and so I cut the end off uh, the length from the top of the retract to the center axle. It's about 139 millimeters. But you want to check that on yours as you put it together if you plan to go this route. And then there are two inserts that are provided there for you for different sizes of wire. So I put the larger insert in. It wasn't quite large enough uh, to, for the five millimeter wire that is in the retract. So I had to drill that out. And then from there, you have to drill and tap set screws into it uh, and so that's what actually holds the strut to the wire are those 632 set screws so you want a 632 drill and tap if you're going to go and do this modification. To finalize it I ended up designing and printing some more scale gear doors because the ones that are included in the kit aren't quite the right shape. So. Um, 3D printed those, installed them on the aircraft, uh, they just glued in place uh, and so yeah they, they really kind of finish out the look of the landing gear uh, with that oleo strut that you've got and that nice fat tire uh, and then that scale shaped door, um, it really dressed it up quite a bit. Finally on the wings, the kit comes with bombs, the kit comes with a center tank and the kit comes with pylons and so I really wanted to do a, a bomb drop in the airplane and so I used the E-Flight payload release and embedded that into the pylon uh, so that way I could do a bomb drop at the field. And so to do that um, I ended up grinding the end of the pylon off with my sander. You can just cut it. You need it to be fully open underneath and then from there I cut some balsa wood basically as ribs so that way I could mount the payload release to it and also stiffen up that plastic pylon. And then from there that pylon just gets glued onto the underside of the wing. And it's extremely stout on there. And then for the bombs, I 3D printed bombs. I found some on Thingiverse, scaled them down just slightly to the right size for the airplane. Uh, and then embedded the payload release capture onto it. All right, with the wings done, it was on to the fuselage. Uh, first things first, you glue the horizontal and vertical stabilizers in place. Uh, you do have to remove the covering so you get a good wood-to-wood -wood bond. And I just used five-minute epoxy here. That did kick off pretty quickly, so if you want more time uh, to work and make sure everything is set and symmetrical, uh, you know, you could use 30 minutes. From there, it was on to getting the elevator and rudder servos in place. Again, using the kit hardware was, were really simple, and those servos uh, fit perfectly in there. So you got to get the Z-Bend set, uh, and then you run the push rods. They're sleeving inside the fuselage, and then you get your clevises attached to uh, each of the control surfaces. And then from there, you get the tail wheel in place, uh, and uh, yeah, again, really easy to do. It's all shown in the instructions. Lastly, to finish it all up, you get the motor in place. Uh, they have a very interesting motor mount set up here. Uh, they have a drilling jig that is uh, provided. It's all laser cut. Uh, and so what they have is a separate electric motor mount that's adjustable forward and back. So you can set the proper distance for the motor. Uh, and so using the drilling jig, you have to drill the firewall uh, so that way you can screw into place that electric motor mount and then from there you get your motor installed onto that motor mount uh, and then with that in place you have to double check your distance and then you glue that motor mount in place uh, and you double it up with some angle stock balsa wood to make sure it can't go anywhere. Double check everything they have the dimensions specified in the instructions uh, and that distance is perfect uh, for the cowl. Follow the instructions and you should be good to go there. So once the motor was in, got the cowl installed in place, I did a couple of modifications up there. I 3D printed a radial engine as well as the scale inlet that the P47 has. So that inlet piece is actually glued into the cowl, but then that radial engine is uh, actually installed to the motor mount itself. I've got a pl two plywood plates 
uh, that screw into the motor mount which are glued to the 3D printed engine. So to finish it all up, got to glue the canopy in place. I used a canopy glue for that and I also 3D printed a prop nut uh, and it's just a facade that just screws in over uh, the existing nut and so that way you know it just kind of dresses up the look a little bit to give it that characteristic P47 look. Once that was all together it was onto the radio setup uh, and the CG. The motor is a Tomcat 420 kV motor. I'm swinging a 1510 propeller and I'm using a 6S5000 Spectrum Smart pack and that pushed all the way forward uh, gives the CG a little bit forward of what's recommended in the manual. All, all of the control throws I've set according to the manual I set those as my, as my high rates uh, and then I have two additional rates going down from there. Uh, I will give you my rates in my final flight review video uh, but I want to get everything tuned first to make sure that we're good to go there. So that was the heart of the assembly. You know, I really like the airplane, how it looks. It's a great size. It's going to be easily transportable in a single piece, which I appreciate. Uh, and so, yeah, from here, in the next part of this video, we're going to do a full repaint. I've got uh, markings from Cali Graphics. So I've also ordered Tamiya AS spray paints. Uh, and I'm so I'm going to paint it all in the correct colors. Uh, and so, um, yeah, let's get on to that. All right, now here is the fully repainted airplane. Because they apply a flat clear on the airplane at the factory, painting the airplane was extremely simple. I didn't have to do any kind of prep work at all. Literally just painted right over uh, the stock finish and came out fantastic. It's amazing how, you know, just some small things like this uh, really do completely transform the looks of a model. Plus, it gives you something unique uh, and, and that you can, you know, that's more your own versus having something that anybody else in the field has, you know. So in terms of painting the airplane, as I mentioned, I didn't do really any kind of prep work at all. I literally just painted right over the stock finish. Uh, and I used Tamiya AS spray cans for that. I'm using AS6 olive drab for the top side and then AS7 neutral gray on the underside. And so I painted the gray underside first uh, and then from there I used uh, 3M soft edge masking tape to kind of rough out the uh, paint separation line in, in a soft feathered edge uh, and then I painted the, the green on top. So I went through and finished up and touched up that paint separation line with an airbrush. I just sprayed the green into a paper cup uh, and then sprayed that through the airbrush uh, and it worked out great. Uh, and then from there, painted all of the white stripes around the model. To do that, I just used Rust-Oleum two times flat white, uh, and it, it covered beautifully over the paint that I'd already used, the green and the gray. It didn't have any issues with coverage whatsoever. Uh, and so then once I had those painted, let it dry, and I just lightly wet sanded uh, the mask lines to kind of soften uh, the edges, and then onto the markings. It was a stock set that Cali Graphics already had. Uh, this model is about one ninth scale and so I ordered a one ninth scale set and the sizing actually worked out about perfectly. Uh, and so those are all vinyl graphics uh, and so what I like to do is peel off part of the backing back behind itself and I'll use that to kind of place the marking and then once I'm happy with the placement then I will uh, slowly apply it and peel the rest of uh, the backing off 
Uh, and that was pretty much it. And then I just added some finishing exhaust touches. I found some parts on Thingiverse for the louvers and the exhaust on the fuselage. Glued those on and then did some exhaust stains with the airbrush and then some gunpowder stains as well. So then once I had that all done, I did a final clear coat all over the airplane uh, and that was the Rust-Oleum 2 times Matte Clear. Uh, I've been using that more and more lately and I do kind of like that uh, clear coat. It's, it's pretty nice and it gives a nice kind of satin finish. And so yeah, the final result, guys, I love how it came out. Um, something about the colors and, and when, I, when I saw this combination of colors on my P39, I knew that I wanted to do a similar combination on the P47. From here, if we wanted to take this a step further, we could actually apply panel lines and do even more weathering, things like that. Uh, I'm not going to do that on this project. Uh, I've got a stack of projects waiting to be built. Uh, and so uh, this is as far as I'm going to take it. However, you can go through uh, and use the pencil panel line technique that I've showed before, uh, as well as the weathering techniques that I've shown uh, in my Warbird weathering video that, that all applies here. And so from here, we got to get this airplane flown. If you've been following my channel, I actually have flown it in the stock colors. Love how it flies. Uh, so we'll get it all flown in the new color scheme, do a full flight review for you, uh, and then report back on, on all my settings, CG, and all of that. Uh, and so yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow along on social media at the RC Geek. Subscribe. Uh, be sure to check out legendhobby.com. They've got this airplane there, as well as a whole assortment of other ARVs. Actually, we've got a very special Legend Hobby uh, assembly series coming. Be on the lookout for that, uh, and so it's going to be a whole lot of fun. That's it. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the field.